So, for instance, let's do that near this example. Imagine we have this equation of motion, and that we had this description, a spatial description of the density. Okay? And I want to obtain the material derivative of the of the of the density. Okay? So what happens if I differentiate that with respect to t? What is the, the derivative of this expression with respect to t? Can you say? Three. Okay? So three constant, three constant everywhere, not depending on space and time, constant, is the material derivative of the density. Does that mean that the rate of change of the density of every particle at any time is three? No, because by differentiating that with respect to t, what, I have, what do I have obtained? The local derivative. So I've obtained just that part of the derivative, which means the rate of change, the rate of change of uh, the density at every time. That means the following, at every point. In a given point, whatever it is, the velocity of the rate of change of a given point, eh, the rate of change of the density is three, okay? So the, the density changes at the rate of three at that given point, okay? At another given point, well, the rate is the same. At another given point, and by spatial point, it's going to be the same, okay? Does that mean, that rate of change, does that mean that the particles are not changing their density? No. This only says that the points, when, 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 when particles arrive to a certain point, the change of the density at this point is three, not the rate of the, the change of the density at that particle. To obtain the rate of the density of this particle, I have to obtain the material derivative of this expression. And for that, I could do that in two ways. Let's see, option one. What I can do is just transforming that equation into a material description of the density and then differentiate with respect to time. Okay, so let's, and the second one is just use this formula and consider the material derivative of the density as the local derivative plus the convective derivative. Let's do the both to see how to match. For instance, this is the spatial description of the density. I want to obtain the material description. What I do? I replace this x in here, this y in here, this z in here, and I obtain one, a description of the density, which is given in terms of the capital X, capital Y, capital Z. What is this? The material description of the density. Okay? Now, if I differentiate with respect to time, what do I obtain? Three. Okay? Three. So, in fact, three is the material, is the, is the material derivative. Okay? Three. Okay, now... Let's do the second. Let's calculate the material derivative of this expression, but keeping in the uh, spatial description. The material derivative of this expression, keeping in the spatial description. So first, I compute... Ah, sorry, sorry, I need a, I need a so, so, just rewind. That is an expression and the material description, the material derivative of this expression with respect to t, Look, the t is in here, t is in here, so it's 3y plus 7z plus 3. That is the material description. As the time derivative, the material derivative, as the time derivative of the material description, which is that. So let's find that expression now, but now taking the material derivative of the spatial description. So, first point. I have to see, to realize that this material description has two parts. The derivative has two parts. The local derivative plus the convective derivative. The local derivative is the derivative with respect to t, which is 3. And the second term has to be computed as the product of the velocity times the spatial gradient of the density. Okay? So this I could have find. Now let's compute the velocity. How do I compute the velocity? Well, in fact, 
I have to differentiate the equations of motion okay, with respect to time. So the velocity is a vector that I just use the transposed expression to just write them as a column, but you have to see, to look at it as being. So uh, this is a row, looking at it as a column. What is the first component of the velocity? The derivative of small x with respect to tai, which is y plus z, which is here. Okay? <laughs> what is the second component of the velocity? Derivative of this y with respect to t, which is 2z. What is the third component of the velocity? The derivative of this with respect to time, which is 3x. And this, as a vector, is the, comp the x component of the velocity. For a given material point, is y, y plus z. The y component is 2z, and the z component is 3x. This is the velocity. Okay? So, now, I'm able to replace that here. To replace that here. And then, and then, multiply that times the gradient of the density. How much is the gradient of the density? It's a vector, because the density is a scalar. The gradient is a vector with three components. The first component is the derivative of density with respect to small x, the density with respect to small y, the density with respect to small z. So that's what we have here. And look, with respect to x, the density, the derivative is 3, with respect to y is 2, with respect to z, there is no z, 0. So, this is the velocity, and this is the gradient of the density. And now we have to multiply these two vectors. Dot product. You know how to make the dot product? I have to multiply the first component times the first component, the second component times the second component, the third component, or times the third component. Or, to be more practical, I take the first vector and I put them transposed as a matrix and multiply by the second, put them vertically. So doing this matrix product, first column, first uh, element is y plus z, multiplied by 3, plus 2z multiplied by 2, plus 3x multiplied by 0. It's the same then. Multiply every component by every corresponding component. So finally, that this product is this, plus 3, look, I obtained this result. I obtained this result, which now is what? Is the material derivative of the local, for the local description, the, the spatial des description of the property. But look, what do I obtain? 3 plus 3y plus 3z plus uh, 3 plus 3y plus 7z. What did I obtain at the beginning? The same result. You know? The point is that to obtain that result, I needed the, to make use of the equations of motion, this one here, to replace here. But to obtain this second result, to obtain this second result, if I had had the velocity, the velocity itself, I wouldn't have needed any, anything else. If I have had velocity. Okay. So that is something that we can exploit in cases that we see that there are many of them in which, in fact, we don't derive, we don't have the questions of motions. We just, like in, in, material, in spatial description, in fluid mechanics, in fluid mechanics, many times we know the velocity and we know the uh, description of the, the spatial description of the property. And then, by using this formula, we can obtain, with the spatial description and the velocity, we can obtain the material derivative. Okay? And that's the example. 